I've said it before and I'll say it again, AMD's AM4 platform will go down as one of the all time greats. But even so, there were a few hiccups along the way and some of them have happened fairly recently. Of course, AM4, it's still very popular today, despite the fact that it has been two years now since we got a truly new product on the platform. And that product was of course the mighty 5800X 3D. And there I've said it, I've got my 5800X 3D quota out of the way for this video. And something else I need to get out of the way. Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte's excellent QD OLED gaming monitors. The Aorus FO32U2P is a flagship 32-inch 4K 240Hz model, the world's first to offer DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20, along with the stunning image quality and motion clarity of OLED. The Aorus FO27Q3 packs a 27-inch 1440p 360Hz panel with lightning-fast response times and superb smoothness. Or you might be interested in the super ultra-wide Aorus CO49DQ with its 49 inch 5120 by 1440 panel at 144 Hz. All Aorus OLED monitors come with a great feature set, including HDMI 2.1, a KVM switch, VRR, and OLED care. These are fantastic monitors, so to learn more about Gigabyte's QD OLED range, check the link in the description below. Now, a big part of the reason for why AM4 is still so popular today is the fact that you can still buy motherboards and CPUs brand new. Obviously that does help a lot. And with AMD producing Zen 3 based processors for so long now, they've been able to bin them to infinity and beyond. And the end result being more product SKUs than anyone can really make sense of anymore. The latest additions being the Ryzen 9 5900 XT, and there's also a Ryzen 7 5800 XT, which I may or may not have also purchased, but we'll talk about that at a later date. But yeah, you heard that right. These are XT processors. And if you're unaware, AMD has actually released a range of Ryzen 3000 series XT processors, and that was back in 2020. And that included the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, Ryzen 7 3800 XT, and Ryzen 9 3900 XT. And they were all a big non-event really, but whatever, I guess it didn't matter. They just provided more options for those interested. The same is of course true of the new Ryzen 7 5800 XT and a Ryzen 9 5900 XT. Neither is particularly exciting or really interesting at all, but also they should be relatively inoffensive. Just parts that might make sense for those of you already on the AM4 platform, if the price is right, of course. Now I say should be relatively inoffensive because AMD, for reasons that will never make sense to anyone outside of AMD, I suspect probably most people within AMD, they made some rather untrue claims, let's say, about these new 5000 series XT processors. In a slide sent to press, which AMD wanted us to then pass on to you, the viewer or reader, AMD officially claimed that the upcoming Zen 3 based Ryzen 9 5900 XT was as fast, or really a little bit faster, than the Core i7-13700K, which would be mind-blowing if true, because the 13700K is a mighty impressive gaming processor <clears throat> when it's not crashing. But things there just don't add up, because as I said, the 5900XT is just an old Zen 3 based processor, and while not terrible for gaming, Zen 3 is worlds slower than Intel's much newer Raptor Lake architecture that the Core i7 is built upon. In fact, when you take a closer look at the specs, you'll learn that the 5900XT is nothing more than a 5950X, as in, they're the exact same processor, with the minor exception of a small, and I mean small, adjustment to the base and boost clocks. Whereas the 5950X can clock as high as 4.9GHz with a base of 3.4GHz, the 5900XT clocks to 4.8GHz with a base of 3.3GHz. Other than that though, they are the same thing, Essentially, the 5900XT should be called the 5950, so a non-X version. You're still getting two CCDs with all the cores active, so it's a 16-core 32-thread processor, and there's a total of 64 megabytes of L3 cache, so 32 megabytes per CCD, and the TDP is still 105 watts. It seems as though AMD wants to address the patchy availability of the 5950X by opting for a slightly lower quality silicon to make the 5900XT. I have to imagine that the best selling Zen 3 silicon is prioritized for use as the 5800X 3D, which currently sells for around $330 US, whereas the 5950X costs just $360 US. 
Given the 5800X3D only requires a single high quality CCD, it stands to reason that AMD is making much more money per CCD with that product. So that's fine, whatever I guess. But what isn't fine are AMD's performance claims for the new binned 5900XT. That's because we've known for a long time now, as in the moment the Core i7-13700K arrived, that the Intel CPU was far superior for gaming, offering over 20% greater gaming performance on average when compared to the 5950X. So with the 5900XT having no chance of improving upon the 5950X's gaming performance, how can it hope to match the 13700K? There's no hope, unless you seriously rig the testing, and I mean you have to be so disingenuous here to the point where it really hurts your credibility moving forward. And so naturally, this is exactly what AMD opted to do, and we exposed it in a video titled Why AMD's Bad Benchmarks Are Bad, Investigating the Lie. Rather than test CPU performance, AMD avoided that altogether and instead tested GPU performance, capping the CPUs with a previous generation entry-level GPU in the Radeon RX 6600. The results were hilariously bad, shockingly misleading, and despite clearly demonstrating this, an alarming amount of people called our testing misleading because we were using the Ryzen 9 5950X and not the upcoming 5900XT. And while I'd normally understand such a position, in this example we are talking about the Zen 3 architecture, an architecture that has been out now for years, so we really know all there is to know about it. And therefore we know that the 5950X and 5900XT really are the same thing, with a 2-3% discrepancy in clock speeds. But I guess there's nothing like having the real deal, so I dropped an eye-watering 590 Australian dollars just to get my hands on the 5900XT, which is a 5950X, which I already had. It also works out to be just $10 Aussie less than the 5950X, so a 2% saving for a 2% reduction in clock speeds, so I, I guess that makes sense. By the way, it's the same story over in the US, $360 US for the 5950X, or $10 less for the 5900XT. Well, actually, that's a 3% saving, so the Americans are getting a sweeter deal there. Anyway, let's load up some benchmarks, and we'll see if the 5900XT is really a 5950X, like we told you it was, but for whatever reason, AMD fans didn't accept our, trust me bro, it's right there in the specs, answer. Okay, so under an all-core workload in Cinebench, the 5900XT averaged an operating frequency of 3.8 GHz at a package power of 144 watts, and ran it up to 64 degrees. Meanwhile, for the single core, we saw a peak of 4.95 GHz, which is comfortably higher than the advertised 4.8 GHz. For comparison, the 5950X averaged an operating frequency of 4 GHz with the same 144 watt package power, though it did get as hot as 72 degrees. Then with just a single core active, it reached 5 GHz, so very little difference overall, as expected based on the advertised specs. Now benchmarking with Cinebench shows the 5900XT to be 2% slower than the 5950X, shocker I know, and that did make it 8% faster than the 12700K, though it is 15% slower than the 13700K, and believe it or not, this is about as good as that matchup gets for AMD. And that's because the single core performance of the 5900XT is very weak relative to the 13700K, 21% weaker in this example, and that doesn't bode well for gaming performance, which we will of course look at in a moment. Now in terms of power consumption, despite clocking a fraction lower, the 5900XT actually used a few more watts in our test. So the assumption here being that silicon quality isn't quite as good as what we see with the 5950X. That said, the difference is so small it's really hard to get an accurate reading on this situation from a sample size of just two. Either way, power usage is very similar. In other rendering applications, such as Blender, the 5900XT isn't a great deal slower than the 13700K, just 10% in this example, which is a reasonable margin, but also it's not huge. Testing with Photoshop, we see that the 5900XT matched the 5950X, making the 13700K 13% faster, so pretty consistent with the application data that we've seen so far. And it's a similar story when testing with Premiere. Again, the 5900XT proves what we already knew, it's a 5950X, and that meant it was 9% slower than the 13700K in this test. Okay, let's take a brief look at some of the 13 games tested, starting with Baldur's Gate 3. Here the 5900XT matched the 5950X, 
exactly with 92 FPS on average, and that meant in this example the 13700K was almost 40% faster. In Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty we find even larger margins, this time the 13700K was found to be 47% faster, rendering 160 FPS on average compared to just 109 FPS, though of course the 5900 XT did match the 5950X. The 5900 XT was just a few frames slower than the 5950X in Counter-Strike 2, making the 13700K 27% faster in this example. Finally, here's the Horizon Forbidden West data, and again, the 5900 XT matches the 5950X, as you'd expect, this time making the 13700K 30% faster. Okay, here's the 13 game average, and everything is exactly as expected. The 5900 XT matched the 5950X, basically exactly, and that meant it was much slower than the Core i7 13700K for gaming. In fact, the Intel CPU was 34% faster on average, which makes sense as the 13700K is very much competing with a part such as the Ryzen 7 7700X, at least when it comes to gaming. So there you have it, I'm sure very few of you will be shocked to learn that the 5900 XT isn't a rival to Intel's 13700K when it comes to gaming performance, despite AMD's uh, untrue claims. And for those of you upset that we called AMD's bad benchmarks bad prior to actually testing the 5900 XT, well I hope this has helped put your mind at rest on that issue. So bad benchmarks and highly misleading marketing materials aside, is the 5900 XT worth considering? Well, unless you were already in the market for a Ryzen 9 5950X, then the 5900 XT, it won't really be of interest given that it is the same product. The 5950X isn't a great gaming CPU, it never really was. If you're on AM4 and you want a good gaming CPU, the best value option right now is the 5700X3D, and if unavailable, the 5800X3D is the next best thing. And then I suppose the next thing in line from that would be the 5700X, which will only be a few percent slower than the 5900XT overall for gaming, but it costs almost half as much. The 5900XT only makes sense if productivity is your primary focus, but even then, you'd already have to be on the AM4 platform, and that's because for the same money, you can buy the Ryzen 9 7900X, or for $50 more, the X3D version of that chip. And as seen in Cinebench, the newer 12 core part is around 20% faster, and it also offers almost 30% greater gaming performance. Alternatively, the Core i7-13700K is also better value for productivity at $330, and is obviously far better for gaming. But sadly, right now we cannot recommend any Intel 13th or 14th generation processors, under any circumstances due to the ongoing stability issues. We will likely have a separate video on that subject in the coming days, but for now, we just can't recommend those parts. At the end of the day, the 5900 XT isn't a terribly useful CPU. Again, if productivity is the focus, then you're better off with the Zen 4 part, and if gaming is the focus, then you're significantly better off with the Zen 4 part. And this makes the 5900 XT a difficult CPU to market, but even so, AMD, they really couldn't have gone about it any worse than they ultimately did. They should have just simply said the Ryzen 9 5900 XT is being offered as a more cost-effective means of acquiring 16 Zen 3 cores, even if it is only $10 cheaper, at least that's the case right now. Anyway, not too much more to say on the 5950X, I mean 5900 XT, if you enjoyed this video give it a like, subscribe, do all that stuff. We also have Floatplane Patreon, check that out if you're interested, there's some pretty cool perks there. And yeah, that's really gonna do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve, see you again next time.